why do we have to keep in front of the church that it is a culture of commitments or a community, excuse me, of commitments? Well, it, it stems from the fundamental fact that our God is a God of covenant. Our God is a God of commitment. And, and therefore, um, the basis of our relationship with him is that of covenant and commitment of faithfulness, of devotion and loyalty. So that's, it, it starts with how we view God. And that into which God now calls us into relationship. That's first. But then second, um, this, this notion of us being under the orders of, of the Lord and therefore being those who are given to certain things that are found within that. So devoting oneself again, to doctrine, devoting oneself to prayer, devoting oneself to the breaking of bread, right? Mm -hmm. Devoting oneself to fellowship. All, all, of, all of these are a part of our covenant union with God and with each other. And I think that by our being those who do that, we bear witness to the world. Our witness to the world is in part seen through the commitments that we keep. Hmm. That for which we are known, mm -hmm. right? Those are the ones known for fellowship. Those are the ones known for the apostles' doctrine. Those are the ones known for the breaking of bread. Mm. Those are the ones known for, for prayer. Those are the ones known for hospitality. So these are the things by which the church was known. Mm. And what happened? They had favor with God and with men. Mm. God added to them daily such as should be saved. As they, as they lived out these commitments, things happen, they bore witness, they gained favor, and they were fruitful. Mm. Now, in that, because you, you actually bring out, because I know that you were sensing an objection, where people might say, okay, that's the ideal, but we all know that people are going to fall short. And then you 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 had that off with Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> yeah. You had that off. Because I, 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 I can hear people say, hey, that's great. That's that Acts 2 is followed by Acts 3. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 and you got yeah, you got yeah, Acts. Yeah. And I mean, you can even hear Paul. That's what I love in 2 Corinthians 11, where Paul talks about, you know, I've been in danger in, in the country. I've been in danger in the city. And he goes through the whole litany. I've been, you know, twice whipped. And he goes through the whole shipwrecked and naked and hungry. And then he goes, and then I have my daily anxiety for these churches. And I'm getting yeah. reports on these churches where they're getting drunk at communion. Guys having <laughs> sex with a stepmother. People are quitting right, their jobs yeah. in Thessalonica. Yeah. I'm like, well, the yeah. church has not changed. Right. There you go. <laughs> but you, but you, right. you, make, you make special effort to head that off with Ananias and Sapphira. Because yeah. you, why did you include them in this description of becoming the church? Why is it so important for our people to hear about them in this understanding of becoming the church? Well, I think it, it's important, um, for, first of all, for us to see any, any one of us could end up like that. Any one of us could end up like that. That's 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 one reason. Um, the second reason, which should, should really be the first reason, is because under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, their story was included. There's something that God wants us to understand. And God says, all right, Luke, don't leave this one out. This has to, this has to. Now, there were a whole bunch of stories that were left out. 
but this one wasn't. And so the church can is is at once at its best and can also be at its worst. It's important for us to know ways in which it is at its worst when it's concerned about appearance. Um, when it is worried about applause, the applause of people, right? Um, when it believes it can get off with a half truth, which a half truth is always a lie, right? Mm -hmm. Th these are these are these are things that that we can all be prone to. You know, wow, Barnabas, Barnabas did that and got that applause. Man, I'd like to have that, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, I want to be. I want to be seen as a tither, but I'm not going to bring the whole tithe. Tithe, right? All we are, we are, we are subject to those impulses. Every one of us, and God includes it in here to say, "Okay, yeah, you might be subject to this." Two, how serious it is. Mm. How how serious that that is i mean they were struck dead i mean now they could have gotten a little tap on the hand but god takes such drastic action to show the degree of threat that behavior is to the church and the church's witness And, and the results are, not that the church diminishes, the church grows. There's a, there's a greater respect for God that, that comes out of it. Now, how do we apply this today? Well, you can name any of the public um, scandals that have occurred. The one thing that has not happened as a result is a greater fear of God. Mm. We've majored on, you know, how awful that was or how bad that was or whatever. But I have not seen it result in a greater fear and reverence of God. In this passage, that's what happened, a greater fear of God. Not, not how bad Ananias and Sapphira were, you know, show-offs, you know, no. Greater fear of God. 